welcome to my talk about Azure, which is what the fuck is an Azure service. Um, I see now that I didn't change the, I look at some stuff. Well, this is gonna be a roller coaster. Um, so, uh, and ob obviously my uh, notes are not working in the computer, so I have to use the phone as well. And I actually held this talk in, uh, in the Rebella Banga or not the Banga or whatever we called it um, a couple of months ago. But th this one has uh, some twists and I actually started to think about um, some other aspects, especially when we uh, get to speak with other people. And sometimes when I speak with other cloud developers, they are like, oh, but Microsoft are just trying to play catch up with uh, Amazon and uh, all of those GCP and stuff. Let's continue. Can my, okay, great, my timer is not working. Cool. Anyway, uh, AWS released back in 2002, I think, and uh, Google joining in in 2006 and 2007, something, and Microsoft joined 2009. So, of course, they're trying to play catch up, right? So, I started to think, is this really the case? Why are you guys picking on me when I'm working in Azure? They really aren't, but you know. Uh, and we should also keep in mind that these are maybe the biggest ones, but we have a lot of other uh, providers such as Alibaba Cloud, which probably no one has heard about. I hadn't before, before I went to the biggest awesome <laughs> cloud event in Germany. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's uh, go to the next slide. So uh, hopefully this is not your production environment. Um, but maybe some of you guys are working in solutions that are like uh, critical. They have to have high uptime, great performance in uh, response times and so on and so on. And uh, then you don't want to end up where something goes down and everything is burning. Trust me, I've been working in this situation. It's quite annoying. Uh, so how can we verify that before it happens? Um, that would be a great thing, right? So let me introduce the first Azure service, which actually the only reason this one is in here is because I think the name is cool. It is called Azure Chaos Studio. It has a cool name. Uh, the service itself uh, is in the preview right now. And when last time I looked at it, it was absolutely dog shit because it didn't support very much uh, fun stuff like they, uh, Microsoft introduced something they called chaos engineering, which is a methodology for adding experiments uh, where you like try to simulate what happens with your solution when this thing happens. So basically, you try to inject faults to detect if the app can handle it or not. So this could be an, uh, basically anything from network outages to a high CPU load on your virtual machines, because everyone is running virtual machines in cloud, right? And if you do, then you're probably doing it wrong. Um, so currently, as I said, this one is in uh, beta phase. So it supports very limited stuff like virtual networks or virtual machines, networks, um, and key vaults. And you can inject like inject stuff like uh, my certificate has expired. What will happen with my solution then? Yeah, let's skip this one. Um, all right, moving on to this lovely cat. Uh, yeah, so speaking of damage control, is there anyone here that has been uh, working with Google's BigQuery? So uh, from what I understood, you can do some really fun stuff with it and it can be super expensive, right? If you're not careful. So yeah, um, so what is BigQuery? Well, uh, it's Google's uh, service to like, easily uh, ingest and store and query massive data sets. And we were not talking about a SQL database containing one gigabyte of data. We we're talking about terabytes of data or even petabytes of data. And if you try to run a query in that in uh, regular SQL, well, you're probably gonna run that query for a long, long, long time. Uh, so how does BigQuery handle this? Well, it automatically scales out and provides you an answer within quite a reasonable time. And of course, if you scan a lot of data, suddenly you end up in a situation like Shopify that 
they had a fun blog post about how they created a query that if they were to release it to production, it would cost them $1 million a month to run. So yeah, please be careful if you use that service. Uh, and for those of you that know me, I usually hate Google, uh, but I was jealous because Google had this and I have, as a backend developer, I love data. I love to do complex stuff. Sometimes it's good stuff. So I was thinking, does Microsoft have this? And uh, as it turns out, uh, yeah, we do. So uh, I'm going to introduce this to uh, my cloud architect here, Christopher Yadin, and we're going to use this uh, in our solution from now on, because why the, why the fuck not? Uh, this is uh, sort of how this UI looks. You run various que SQL-ish queries, uh, and you can connect this to like databases, storage accounts, data lakes, whatever, and you get nice graphs that can produce, you know, business people, they like graphs. Uh, it can be integrated to uh, Power BI, Azure ML, and ML, that is my Azure Machine Learning, for those that don't know, uh, and you can do a shit ton of stuff with this. Moving on. So where do we go from here? Well, uh, it were, could be worth to mention that uh, Synapse and BigQuery, they are very similar in their features and what they can do. They also differ in terms of how they are uh, uh, architectured. So for instance, Synapse is not serverless, which BigQuery is. And uh, the way they bill you are very different because uh, Google will bill you by running a query, whereas Microsoft more is like you buy compute, and when you have consumed your compute, you will have to buy more compute. Uh, so where did I want to go? Well, I wanted to uh, keep track of this expensive territory, um, and then I started to think that, well, usually most of the stuff we build are in cloud, I hope, or we would like to do that. Unfortunately, we have something called GDPR, which is kind of good, I guess. But it also makes it difficult for some of us that want to put everything in the cloud because we're not allowed because of regulations of data not being allowed to be moved to certain countries. So what does that leave us? Well, we are supposed to have this stuff back on on-premise servers. And then we also need to think about, all right, now we have to communicate between cloud and on-premise. And when you do that over the internet, it can sometimes be less ideal, I guess. Uh, so you share network with everyone else, and maybe you don't want that. Maybe you, you want this uh, fuck yeah feeling. So Microsoft introduced this triangle here that is called Express Route. And what that basically is is a private fiber connection between your data center and uh, uh, Azure. So it will basically mean that you are not routed your traffic via the internet. So suddenly you have like more secure network connection between your data center and Azure. You will have better response times because you're not jumping through all of the uh, tiers in the network. And uh, of course you will get better speed, better uh, lower latencies and stuff like that. You will also have um, some redundancy uh, with this. So um, uh, they have something they call connection pairs. So for instance, if one landline would go down, you will still have a fallback with another landline. And the way you get this is by opening up your uh, wallet and then you contact some uh, Microsoft uh, sales representative that will uh, get, probably get you in touch with like Talia or some other service broker because they have like a couple of service brokers that they provide internet with and that will connect this for you. And that's about Express Route. So what do we want to do now? Well, uh, we still want to be cloud developers, right? But we are stuck on, um, on on premise. So what would be cooler than your private network? That would be this. 
like the saying goes, if I can't have it in the cloud, then the cloud has come to me. That's my rule. So uh, Microsoft allows you to run your own Azure, basically. And this is very useful when you have like, uh, like uh, your um, infrastructure team that claims that their uh, ser data server are having better uptime than, uh, than uh, Microsoft's Azure has. Fun story, I heard that this, uh, someone claimed that. Uh, there are, of course, uh, three various uh, offerings from Microsoft with uh, three very similar names, just to make things uh, difficult for us to keep track of. But uh, the Stack Edge here, it's uh, supposed to be used for like, uh, well, as the name says, in the edge. So when you have edge IoT devices that needs to be maybe process some data before streaming it up in Azure and you have bad connectivity and stuff like that, then this uh, offering could help. Uh, let's skip the Azure Stack HIC because uh, it's not very interesting. Uh, HIC stands for Hyperconverged Infrastructure Solution. And Armand once said that we in Lund, we are like proud because we know what we're doing and stuff. I, I have no idea what that is. Uh, Actually, I, I I bullshit a lot, if you haven't noticed it already. But uh, let's uh, go to the Azure Stack Hub, because that one is actually quite cool. Uh, what it allows you to do is basically to run apps um, and Azure services in your local data center. Uh, and it also makes your data center like an uh, autonomous solution. So it can be run completely uh, without any connection to uh, internet and uh, this allows us happy developers to build uh, native cloud native solutions uh, that are deployed on premise rather uh, in the public cloud so that one is in my opinion pretty cool uh, and of course if we expand this uh, little tech we can get this fancy container here by Microsoft this is the Azure Modular Data Center. So uh, the cool thing about this one is that it's a fully functional data center and it's on wheels. So you can uh, drop it uh, like everywhere where you need it, where there's basically no internet, if that's needed. Um, it comes with everything like HVAC, which stands for heating, uh, ventilation, air conditioning. So you have cooling and all of that, of course, in it. Uh, it comes with a UPS, so power supply will not be interrupted. You can connect it with uh, to internet with a landline, but if that one should fail, then it has backup using satellites with various partners. Like uh, there's a company down in what was it, Schweiz or uh, something, S A S E S, and uh, also SpaceX are providing internet for them. Uh, and this thing here was uh, released back in 2020, this service or basically product. And uh, Amazon just launched this uh, similar thing uh, this year. So take that. Microsoft was first. Uh, so un unfortunately, there's a catch. We can't, we can't buy this because you have to be the US government. So if you were to be in let's say South American jungle having an operation and being CIA. I don't know why you would do that, but uh, then you maybe need this. Moving on. Uh, so five years ago, you would pay $50,000 to send uh, one kilogram into space. And today that cost has been reduced to about two to three thousand dollars. So um, sending my cat here up to space would cost me about uh, eleven to fifteen thousand dollars. Totally worth it, in my opinion. So moving to the next service, which is ground station <laughs> as a service. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. Microsoft, they are crazy. Um, so when uh, when I was looking, what what does Azure offer? Because that was also part of 
this talk. It's like, can you do more than just basic web apps? We ever find things that cloud is just another computer where you run your uh, web application. And true, we do that a lot, but there's so much more to do in both Azure, AWS, GCP. And apparently, uh, sending stuff into space is super cheap, obviously, uh, but uh, bringing data back from space was apparently super expensive, um, mostly because you need to build one of those arrays or ground stations, as they are called, and that is maybe not uh, the cheapest investment. And renting in on existing ones are not very cheap either, apparently, because you rent in yourself in a long-term contracts. So Microsoft basically uh, provides a service where you just pay whenever you need to connect to a satellite and get some data back, then you just uh, schedule that with Microsoft and they just fix it for you. Um, what's cool with Microsoft is that they are apparently also building their own s satellite downlinks, because why not? Uh, with more satellites in space, the um, demand for uh, compute and uh, downstreaming data is just increasing. And Microsoft also provides a lot of good opportunities where you can just connect this data when you receive it and just pipe it into your systems that you run in Azure, if you now run them in Azure. And that this is why they sell it in. You want, you want to use your data then, of course, we have services in Azure that will uh, help you. For instance, if you have an image satellite, you can use machine learning algorithms in Azure ML to en enhance the image. Uh, I know we're laughing because that was something we did back in uh, old uh, crime scene uh, vi and movies where they are like, enhance this CCTV to find a suspect. Well, apparently with ML, we can do that. And uh, Microsoft is helping this with uh, this Azure Orbital program. And speaking again about uh, AWS, they are also providing uh, the same service uh, as of now with uh, AWS ground stations. So Microsoft are not alone with this. Uh, and I also tried to see if Google would do something similar. They are not offering it themselves, but they have partnered with some other company that is called Leaf Space which is building their solution on top of uh, on uh, Google Cloud. And uh, then they are renting in themselves on other uh, uh, satellite arrays. So what do we have here? Um, of course, there is a lot more in Azure. Uh, you can the first one here, uh, the 5G, you can, if you would like to connect and host your own 5G cellular network. I, I, know, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I was thinking about doing it at Alpha Laval, but uh, Helene Udell, she, uh, she said, no, I'm not allowed. Uh, and if that's not your thing, uh, we have the other one uh, down at the bottom right, uh, which is uh, Azure Sphere. Uh, so if you would like to build your own vending machines and then make them super secure, then you can get uh, Microsoft certified uh, uh, silicon and uh, OS and uh, everything. And it is super secure compared to what your regular IoT device from Klaus Ulsson is. Sorry, Klaus Ulsson. Uh, but if IoT isn't your thing, I already mentioned mach uh, machine learning and ML, and there's a shit ton of stuff you can do with that. Uh, but maybe the newest, hottest thing, I'm sorry that Uttu isn't here because I would like to ask him if this is a trending technology. But uh, that up there is um, called Azure Quantum. And as you can maybe guess, it is quantum technology. So we could, for instance, pick up Q Sharp, which is a programming language by Microsoft uh, for quantum computing. So there's, it's super popular within like the F Sharp community with like five people. Uh, and uh, 
what, what the hell is quantum? Well, apparently I learned at the same cloud conference as uh, I mentioned before, uh, apparently we are in a fantastic world where uh, quantum computing will, for instance, be used for, uh, yeah, Goldman Sachs are using it for computing uh, financial models, but we can also use it to basically break every encryption algorithm that we are using today. So if we want a secure internet, we apparently need quantum algorithms to encrypt our communication within a foreseeable future. So maybe we should try QSharp and uh, just break everything. And I would like to leave the topic with saying that these are just some services in Azure. There are about 200 products that they offer. And uh, I would guess that there's a lot that could cater to everyone. So you don't just have to build your own little uh, web application. And I think that's everything I would like to say today. Yep. <laughs>